Hi, my name is John, and welcome to another edition of Statistics Quest. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about Nolan Ryan and his seven no-hitters, and I had mentioned that I wanted to do a few things coming up here. One was the, the no-hitters, one-hitters, and two-hitters, and the other was the fact that he took four no-hitters into the eighth inning or later at age 41 or later. Um, the no-hitters, one-hitters, and two-hitters, as I started to do the calculations, it occurred to me it's really not a good binomial distribution problem. And the reason is because of the fact that the, what, anytime you have a binomial distribution, which we'll mention here in a second, but you, you need a number of trials, okay? And he had 807 starts, and that, that was the N that for number of trials that I was going to refer to. But when you get into situations where you have like a one-hitter or two-hitter, you might get taken out of games, uh, you know, you've, we've, especially today, right, with pitch counts. So, you, you know, you might have a one-hitter through seven innings, and you don't even have a chance, so to speak, to get a two-hitter through nine innings because your manager takes you out. So what I'm getting at is because of human intervention, it distorts the findings. So I'm not even going to do that. Now, with no-hitters, that can happen also, but, and I think we might have seen it in the World Series once uh, a couple years ago. I believe somebody, if I recall correctly, had a no-hitter through five innings and was taken out. Um... I think in the World Series, but anyway, but you rarely see that, right? So if somebody does take a no-hitter into the, you know, eighth inning, or like, they're probably going to complete the game. But getting back to the, when I had done the seven no-hitters. Okay. In a similar vein, if somebody has a no-hitter into the eighth inning, um, well, even if they are taken out, I'm going to do this problem through seven innings. In other words, we're going to count something as a no-hitter, so to speak. It doesn't matter what we call it, but as a no-hitter through seven innings, counting as a no-hitter, okay? So in other words, we're just kind of trimming down the size of the game. Instead of nine innings, seven innings. You know, we might pretend maybe it rained in the top of the eighth inning, okay, and the game ended, okay? So we can do this in a similar vein, okay? Now, um, so again, Nolan Ryan took four no-hitters into the eighth inning, at age 41 or later, that's a very impressive feat in and of itself. And so I wanted to look at the probability of doing that. Now, so we mentioned last time, and I'll briefly mention this time, you know, you have some nuances going on. You have walks, you have double plays, errors, uh, things like that, that are kind of, um, you know, putting a caveat into the probabilities. And last time I had established that Ryan had... I, I had gotten uh, with some, you know, kind of some calculations off to the side, an 80% chance of getting an out, okay? And that was looking at his whole career. He was still pretty impressive of a pitcher up through age, I believe he pitched to 46. But, you know, somebody at, say, in their 40s, by and large, is not going to be as good as they were in their 20s and 30s you know, one exception that comes to mind is perhaps Tom Brady. but And maybe another exception was Ryan. But So the 80% chance of getting an out throughout his career, I'm not sure that that's fair to hold it at when he was in his 40s. So I just dropped it a little bit to a 77.5% chance of getting an out. Where did I get that number? Out of thin air, right? I didn't want to make it 75. I thought that was too low of a drop. I didn't want to keep it at 80. I think that's, you know, you're asking a, a, a pitcher basically to be at his peak, in a sense, in his 40s, which is, is quite hard. Even Tom Brady, despite the fact of the year that he had this year, um, he had actually shown, believe it or not, with some advanced metrics, some decline in the last several years. Uh, and, of course, football is a team sport. You've got different dynamics, but... I think you'd be almost, it's almost impossible for a pitcher to be pitching at his peak or near his peak in his 40s. So we're going to have it at 77.5%, the probability of getting an out 
um, and hence a 22.5% chance of getting a hit for Ryan in his 40s. So how do we work that? It's actually a pretty easy problem. So we're going to assume no walks, no errors. If, you, if a batter goes to the plate, he either gets a hit or he doesn't. That's it, to make it simple. In this case, we are assuming a 77.5% chance of being an out. So for Ryan to pitch a no-hitter through seven innings, right, which is in essence taking a no-hitter into the eighth inning, you need an out 21 straight times. How do you do that? It's real easy. It's 0 0.775 to the 21st power, and that is equal to 0 0.0047, okay? Now, if we, um, so there's a 0 0.0047 chance of getting um, a no-hitter a no through seven innings, okay? Now, he made 62 starts. We want to find the probability of getting four no-hitters or more through 62 starts. That's where we use the binomial distribution. Now, you know, very often students will ask, people will ask, well, how do you know to use the binomial distribution? Well, it's not really an easy answer, but once you get used to these, the binomial distribution actually comes into play in many contexts. And those contexts are all of the nature that you have so many attempts or trials, we call them. And out of those trials, you have so many successes. Okay, Probably the most common example are coin flips. If you flip a coin 20 times and you ask the probability of getting ahead 12 times, binomial distribution. Why? Because you have 20 trials or attempts and you're looking for the probability of 12 successes. We can define a success any way we want, okay? And in this case, we're defining a success as a head because we termed, we, we, uh, we phrased the problem in terms of a head, okay? So, you know, you could, you could define a success any way you want, even something negative, okay? It doesn't really seem to lend itself to something negative, but if generally you want to define a success by the way you phrase a question. So you might even in baseball, how many times does a person strike out? Okay, so again, you go to bat 100 times. Your probability of striking out is uh, 20%. What's the probability of striking out 30 times out of 100 times? Binomial distribution, 100 attempts, 30 successes, okay? which are striking out, you know, again, that's generally not a success. We're only calling it a, calling it a success for the problem because that's what we often call um, the, what we're looking for for the binomial distribution. Okay, so, N is 62. R, which is the number of successes, is... 4, equal to 4, because he took 4 no-hitters into the 8th inning. And we know that P is equal to 0 .0047, okay? Now, first I'm going to go over the, the probability of finding exactly 4 successes, but then we're going to deviate from that a little bit, okay? For the binomial distribution, it's really just a... Formula. Now, of course, with calculators and in particular the internet, it's even easier. Um, you know, many years ago, when we did this, these problems in college or in high school, we'd, we'd work it out longhand, okay? So, just to show you the nuts and bolts of this, I'm going to work it out longhand. So, the probability of four successes out of 62 trials is going to be, so we're going to put four successes is going to be 62C4 times the probability of a success, which is 0 0.0047, raised to four successes 
times the probability of a failure, which is 0.9953, to the 158th, I'm sorry, not 158, uh, I was 60 to start, so it'd be 58. Okay, so how did I get this? Symbolically, for a binomial distribution, it's NCR, P to the N, 1 minus P to the N minus R. Sometimes students, people get really mixed up with all these symbols, so I like to express it in words. It's the combination of the number of attempts with the number of successes. This is the probability of a success raised to the number of successes times the probability of a failure raised to the number of failures. Well, how did we get 0.9953? If the probability of a success is 0.0047, then the probability of a failure must be 1 minus that, which is 0.9953. We raise it to the number of failures, okay? So notice probability of a success raised to the number of successes, probability of a failure raised to the number of failures, all multiplied by this combination formula. All right, we can work that out. It's a small number. I'm actually not going to work it out because I'm going to show you another way to, well, not another way to do this, the appropriate way to go about this. Because, and I mentioned this last time, and this is kind of a tricky thing, so a little bit, okay? We want to know, you know, he had four no-hitters, right? That's impressive. But to find the rarity of this, we don't want to just find four because that would be understating the rarity of what he did. We really want to find four or more. So that means the probability of four plus the probability of five plus the probability of six up through 62, right? He could have had 62 no-hitters. Well, we'd be there all day, okay, or all week if we did this all long in. Probability of four plus probability of five plus boom, down to 62, right? Now, there's a couple ways around this. One, you know, the easiest way around it is to do it on a calculator or on a computer, right? And that's, of course, kind of a quick fix. I like to do things the old school way for a couple reasons. Number one, I mean, not that this is commonly going to happen, but what if you're doing the problem and your computer crashes or you don't have a calculator or the battery runs out? I think it's good to know it the longhand way, but perhaps more importantly, knowing things the longhand way sometimes gives you some insight to wrap your head around kind of what's going on behind the scenes, and I think it makes you a better student, a, a, it gives you a better understanding of some of the concepts in probability, all right? So, we could go ahead and find the probability of four or more, but again, we said we'd be there all day. But instead, what if we find the probability of three or fewer? Well, that's not so hard, even longhand. The probability of three or fewer is the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three, okay? Um, so, for example, what's the probability? I'm just going to pick out one of these. Two successes. Okay? We do the same thing before using the binomial distribution. That's going to be 62C2 out of 62 starts, two successes, times probability of a success raised to the number of successes, probability of a failure raised to the number of failures, if we calculate that out, we would get rounded to the nearest thousand, 0.137. That's the probability that he would have taken two no-hitters into the eighth inning, the exact probability. All right, then we can easily find zero, one, and three, right? I'm not going to go, you know, waste the time here to do that, but I wanted to, to show you one of them. If we would find 0, 1, 2, and 3, which of course we would have to, 
Let me write this down. Probability of zero is 0.464. Probability of one is 0.357. Probability of two is equal to 0.137. Probability of three is equal to 0.035. If we add them up, we get 0.992. Uh, actually, this, this might be a tiny bit off because of rounding errors, okay? Uh, but very close to 0.992. So, but what did we find in finding this? We found the probability of three or fewer. We really wanted the probability of four or more, didn't we? But if the probability of three or fewer is 0.992, then the probability of four or more is equal to the complement of three or fewer, which is simply one minus 0.992, which is equal to 0 0.008. That's the probability of taking four no-hitters into the eighth inning, right? That was the original question. A little bit less than 1%. Pretty rare, not quite as rare as the seven no-hitters that we looked at last time, but still pretty rare. Um, actually, now if you, if you wanted to do this you know, much quicker, and in fact, you know, just having fun playing around uh, with the binomial distribution, I do know that it, this is probably one of many sites, but one site that I happen to find is stattrack.com. If you do a search for binomial uh, calculator, you will find, and it'll actually give you different ways of doing it. So, for example, the probability of so many or more, so many or less, etc., but if I, so if you go to that and you type in, you'd have to type in 62 trials, which is N, you type in four, and then you can, there's one of the, one of the parts is to find the probability, you can find it directly, four or more, okay, so they do the work for you, and in fact, that probability is 0.0075, which of course is very close to 0.008, there are some rounding errors here, so either way, a little bit less than 1% of him doing this under the assumptions that I gave, uh, you know, with 77.5%, a fair assumption, right? You know, it's eh, probably pretty close in the ballpark. But nonetheless, uh, so the purpose of this was kind of twofold. One was just to, you know, to, to point out uh, just, just how impressive Nolan Ryan was in the 40s. The other was to give, you know, a, a small lecture. Sorry, it went a little longer than I thought. I'm looking at the time. It's almost 18 minutes, but a little lecture on the binomial distribution. And uh, so anyway, so I hope this makes sense. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, I will see you next time on Statistics Quest. Thank you.